Hello and welcome back to Lookster Gaming. Well, I'm hoping I'm live anyway. I don't. It's uh, it doesn't really give you an indication of when you're actually live on this, like streaming directly through the Xbox and the fact that streaming, well, the fact that opening the Twitch app on my phone, it doesn't show up as me being live right away. So again, I don't have like a direct indication like I normally would of. So uh, doing it the way I used to do it and well, the way I'll be getting back to doing it eventually but I'm just currently doing it like this way because it involves less setup I guess I just have to like start up the Xbox, load up the game snap the Twitch app on the side and hit broadcast and then start broadcast and I'm good to go but yeah, <laughs> I'm an hour late getting started here anyway and, and for today I'll be getting on with some time trial so I believe I've switched over here, yep. I just wanted to make sure of that and before I continue I'm just going to make sure I'm showing up as live on my mobile Twitch app. Yep, it shows me as being live. So yeah, I guess I'm good to go now. Let me actually press on that and change it to be chat only. Uh, I said chat only and it insists on playing an advert. Never mind. I'll just open up as the this the tab chat bit that you can have at the side, but I've got that open just in case I need it, but I shouldn't do. And I probably should mute. Uh I don't know. I think I like nudged I managed to nudge the thing the piece of furniture that my Xbox is on and I think it briefly disconnected the HDMI cable like because the stream kind of went away there let me just open the stream and make sure that that doesn't do a thing or well to make sure the stream's still working before I continue and let me mute that advert on the phone anyway let me well I guess if I switch to here and the tracks for hang on Oops, sorry about that, I just wanted to adjust the headset there and make sure it was, like, in place, like... I guess it'll be as close to my mouth as I can get it really, and... I hope it picks me up as loud and clear as it, as it can. I've still got a bit, of, a bit of a sore throat yet, so that might affect my ability to, like, speak louder and clearer, I guess. But yeah, Imola's the first track. Apparently my stream's lagging already, and it could be because of the fact that... I've got to open here. Hang on, let me listen back. Because I've got to open on my phone. So if I just, like, it's buffering, but if I mute it here and I mute myself. Yep, yeah, but I sound fine. I just, like, turned the phone volume up a bit, and I am indeed. I never meant to close out of that. Right, let's get on track, or in a moment anyway. I just need to go to my garage. I think I'm just going to load the. Huh. Uh, I'm sure it was Hockenheim. I know it was Hockenheim, but I made changes to it as well. That if I go into which part was it again? I believe it was this one. That the front downforce is turned down, and so is the. The weight bias, whereas if I say load up the Hockenheim setup, oh wait, that is the Hockenheim setup I just loaded. If I load up the Road America setup, edit, and then yeah, you'll see it's front down force to two, and that's turned up. So, hmm, I don't really know where to, what I should go with. Like, it's it's um, Emma. Hmm. Because I, hmm, I might just go with the Road America setup because, well, it's not really a Road America setup. <laughs> Let me get my words. Let me English <laughs> specifically, but it's more of the fact that, like, there's that slight difference between the two, and the adjustment was made going by, like, stuff that I'd been told, I sort of think. So. But let me just go with this one, and if I save it to Emla for now at least, then I might. I might even try adjusting it just to see if I get any kind of gain or not. Right, so we've got that set up loaded up for Emla now, and we can finally 
go to track in our car. You just saw it at Project Cars live stream where you actually see me on the track. <laughs> how how innovative, innovative. I English well. <laughs> I English very well, yes. <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. I've managed to get chat only working properly on my on my phone now. And I don't know who the two viewers are on my stream, but welcome anyway. <laughs> it says I have two viewers, and that's all I know at this point. I may turn up my TV volume, like because of the way it snaps the Twitch app on the side for seeing your chat. Then it kind of shrinks your game from being full screen to like three quarters of the screen, so that in turn means I have to sit a bit closer to the TV to actually see it. It's like if, because I'm using a gamepad it means I can sit back a bit, but say if I had a wheel set up I might end up sitting like close to the TV if I had like a wheel and uh, like foot pedals and all that and then the gear stick and such, I might want to be sat a bit closer so I can like better see what's going on directly in front of me. But I prefer using the pad anyway, any time I've tried using a wheel I never really got on with it and like I wouldn't really know compared to say like I don't know if I get on better with a wheel nowadays because I think the last time I used a wheel in a racing game was like maybe the the original Xbox I think or maybe the PlayStation days, I can't remember. But anyway, <laughs> it's like the well, the two I did mention that the two tracks are Imola and Sakito, and I believe Sakito is the one that's based on the Japanese Grand Prix circuit at Suzuka. So I'm kind of not looking forward to that one just because of the fact that, as much as I sort of like the the Japanese Suzuka circuit, it's a personal favourite of mine when it comes to both watching like the F, the Formula One racing on the TV and actually having it on like various racing games. And I've cut across there. <laughs> like how even I slowed down it still penalised me, but yeah, that was due to happen. But yeah, even though like as much as I like the the track, like I like the real version of the track, whereas the Keto's like a more based off of, but not quite. It's like a it's like a budget version of the track and so it's like nowhere near as good as the original, which is why I don't like it on this game. Whereas, say, I think the likes of uh, Forza and Gran Turismo and that actually have the the proper licensed circuit, so I guess, like, I don't know if Slightly Mad Studios, the developers of Project Cars, weren't allowed to have that license in, or I guess there was some issue down the line, but yeah. Let's, I'll probably end up muting here in a moment, or like muting at times throughout the stream as I usually do when it comes to Project Cars, so I can just like focus on the the driving side of things rather than the talking and the driving and it's like I can somewhat do both but you can focus better when you're not like speaking during a lap. Oh dang it, let me, I just realised something, let me X out of this because I've not actually set a lap yet and, nope, I just, no, did that, hmm, oh, I guess that only makes a sound in my ear, I hope so anyway, because <laughs> I accidentally pressed on the volume buttons for the, the headset thing there and it made a boop in my ear because I pressed on the plus. Yeah, one thing I meant to do is what I normally do, and that's check the leaderboards. Just to see... So previously in the GT class I'd set a time in the BMW 320 Group Turbo 5? Which car is that then? Is that even... BMW, BMW 320 Group Turbo 5? Ah, so that's that older car. I don't remember that. <laughs> Maybe that was just for fun, or I don't know if that was for a league or not, but yeah, that was a 151.907, and I'm pretty sure that's like going to be a lot slower than the times I'll be setting. And I can confirm that by pressing this. And yeah, well, it's slower, but not a lot slower. 
Yeah, because these times here, the one, like ignoring Maestro's time because that's like the the faster McLaren, as well as the fact that that's like, well, these two are the slower cars. And there's still some of the older times on there actually, which is quite surprising to see. Like you would have thought they maybe they haven't had the chance to do a time trial, I guess, but. These ones here are the, the ones that are actually in the league and as you can see they've got sort of like, well from one range from a 141 through to a 144.7 and because me and Shadow Mick there's had some good races together in the last uh, couple of Saturday and, Saturday and Friday and Sunday night racing then so it'll be more his time that I want to aim for that 144.75. 0.775 even, so... Nope, make sure I've got the car selected again. Also make sure I have the setup loaded. Right, I'm always loaded, car... Right, now let's go to track properly and start setting some lap times. I'll probably mute as soon as I get going anyway, just so I can focus on the laps and see if I can get a 144.7 or better. I'll probably get a lot worse at first, that seems to be the way it goes, I start off quite slower but then as the car and the track, the, sort of the feel of the two come together then that's it's, uh, slowly, you gradually start making these improvements that you weren't originally making. So yeah, wish me luck I guess. Oh, hey there, Octo. <laughs> I just uh, had my mic muted there, but I thought I'd unmute to say, hey, Octo. Who said yellow. Like, yellow with a H in it, as if this to say hello, but yellow. Okay. <laughs> I get what you mean. But will the people of YouTube, let's ask. <laughs> Leave your answers in the comments, I don't know. But yeah, th thought I'd put that in there just because I, I, if you're new to the streams, I guess, for anyone that's just popping in, I export these streams over to YouTube, my YouTube channel as well, so if you miss out on the streams, then they're sort of freely available on YouTube to watch also. As well as the fact to make sure that each and every stream I've done has been a, a highlight for the entire stream, so that way that like I've got my own uh, archive of streams as well on Twitch. So anyone who's not on YouTube and only knows me through Twitch can still like watch back the streams if they wish or or at least they're there sort of thing. They're there as a personal archive for me I guess and anyone who fancies them. So we're going to mute here once, or I'll pause the game here even once I cross the line. I may just let the, the replay run whilst I do so. Just because I was going to message on the the group for the simulation racing league to let them know that I'm streaming. Yeah, so that was a 147, even though it showed 0.299 there, it, it, some, it rounds up to being 0.3. So let me press on view replay and let that run whilst I like send out the put a message on the Facebook thing for them to know that I'm streaming if anyone if any of them that are around want to stop by. Plus this will have a this run and it means I'll be able to have some I'll be able to use these any of these scenes for like the thumbnail for the YouTube video and the Twitch so highlight as well. So so that's why I like prefer to just have the replay running at some point on the stream. Uh, let me find the page quickly. I might end up, <laughs> I might end up not getting this done in time. It's like I'm currently racing against myself to write a post in the time that I went round the track. Uh, I'm 
just about done typing. I just got. I'm just including my Twitch link in case any of them need it. So, well, I guess it'll be easier for them to press on the link than to say try and look me up manually. <laughs> I guess. And there we go. <laughs> But yeah, I do like watching the replay pack just in general because I can see, like... <laughs> I'll be able to take over here in a moment and... And this is where it'll stop, yep. Right, let's continue on. And how are you today, Octo, by the way, if you're if you're not already stream like in my stream. Well, oh, dang it. <laughs> of course, I managed to invalidate the lap already. And there's an annoying, annoying neighbour in his car outside, like in real life here, that all it is is a, a crappy voxel Corsa with like modified crap under the hood to make it sound like a sports car and like he sits there like waiting on his friend coming coming out or something and sits there with the engines that are on low revs or something it makes a really ir irritating like rattling sound and I don't know if if you remember the old Grand Theft Auto, the original Grand Theft Auto game, the top down view. And it, and it's like the kind of rattle sound that say if you pushed one of those little bollard things into the water or pushed a person into the water, there was sometimes like a an audio glitch and it made like a sort of rattling sound if you with this sort of splashing sound effect into the water because it wasn't quite a splash, it was more of like a sort of throaty kind of sound. And dang it to invalidate in this lap. <laughs> and o Octo says he's good to tired as always, but nonetheless. <laughs> the usual then, I guess. And me, I, I'm alright. Like like I said, I've still got a bit of a sore throat here, so apologies if I'm not like loud and clear as I might want to be, but I sounded okay enough through my through opening the stream on my phone to see if how audible I was, so and that was without turning the phone up to like 100% volume, that was at half the volume, so... But yeah, I'll just like... I won't even mention when I'm mute, I'll probably just like mute and unmute freely. So, uh, bear, you barely tell at times. The stream seems to think I'm lagging again and... It just seems to come and go, like it'll say I'm lagging for a few seconds on the the Twitch tab at the side, but then it just like goes off and continues as normal for a good portion. I'm trying not to cut those corners because I don't want to invalidate the, the next lap. And I've gone in far too deep today. I'm surprised that I didn't invalidate the lap because I'd run wide enough there that you could probably almost consider that as corner cut. And Octo says, well I'm having the same old buffers so I'll be back when it's gone. Yeah, it might be buffers that were caused on my end there because it did say the stream was lagging and it recommends to adjust quality settings but 
I don't know if I should be touching that during the stream, it might break the stream. <laughs> well, I suppose it gives you the option to, so it shouldn't, really, if it gives you the option to adjust these midstream. If you're still there, Octo, which you might not be, but if you are still there, do you use mobile to watch, or do you use, like, proper computer or laptop, or are you on Wi-Fi, for example? Because all of those can have a factor in if the stream will buffer or not. It's like mobile Twitch on my phone always buffers, but yet watching, say, through the Xbox One here, or watching streams on the laptop, they're fine, 99.9% of the time at least. And that 0.1% of the time they're buffering. Whereas I think in Octo's c case, I think it's like 50 50. Dang it. <laughs> of course right there at the final corner I managed to cut cut it too much and invalidate that lap that I just done. I know just as Octo says about he uses his computer with Ethernet and that he doesn't even have a wireless adapter much the the stream, the Twitch tab at the side mentioned about the fact that I'm lagging, so he probably got buffering again. And I've already messed up the start of this lap. So that would have been a 146 dead, like 146 point not not not. Would have, should have, but wasn't because they made a stupid mistake right at the end. Still got a long way to go before we reaching that 144, if at all possible even. It's like I'm only using that as a benchmark because it's like the, the next time that I can realistically aim for, but... I'd be happy if I got like a 145 even. If it was like a 145 dead or 145.1 or something. Ah yeah, and of course there's that corner. Or corners like that where if you run off too wide it counts as leaving the track and gaining an advantage. So, taking my finger off the acceleration after braking and letting it coast across the thing didn't count as corner cutting, but seemingly if you press on the accelerator again it does. From the experience before, anyway. And for a moment there I thought that was about to invalidate this lap I'm about to start. But yeah, that what I did just then, that's what I'm trying not to do. Because that like invalidates the lap that I'm like trying to put together. Oh yeah, I've went massively deep into there. <laughs> hmm. And in that case, it counted as corner cutting. 
Maybe I guess maybe it, it's felt I didn't break enough, I guess. Like for me, the, the time trials here are essentially the practice sessions that if you're going to have your your running off across the track or invalidated laps or whatnot, it's better to have them happen now than have them happen like during the qualifying or the race for the actual league races come tonight. In which case, like an invalidated lap in qualifying would be annoying if, if it was like a, a new personal best per se. And in the race, that could potentially slap a sort of a time penalty on you that slows you right down and holds you there until you're sort of released to drive again. And it very often happens around this track that you get time penalties slapped on you everywhere. I like how the one thing it doesn't mind you doing is cutting across those green parts there, even though you can fit your car fully inside them at one point. Dang it, I knew that was going to happen. Surprised I got away with that cutting the first corner as much as I did, but that one it just went, nope, you're not having it this time. How's the stream going for you now, Octo? Like, is it running fine at the moment, or are you still getting the buffering on your end? That's cost me a bunch of time for starting a lap, but that just about threw me off into the wall, which would have cost me even more. Yeah, I only just made it through that chicane there.
Nope. <laughs> I was wondering if that was going to happen or not, the one I started sliding everywhere. Oh, man, I want to check something here. Did I just leave a... It looks almost like I left a sort of McLaren-shaped front... front of the car in the barrier there. <laughs> if I switch to a view where I can, like... Oh, that's... Yeah. <laughs> it's like it almost looks like... It's what essentially does look like I've sort of left a McLaren-shaped dent just in the bumper. Or, or maybe not a McLaren-shaped dent, but just like... It looks like the front of the car, just like into the barrier there. Because that's pretty much what happened. And once again I'm getting too much on the, the revs and the gearing and the acceleration before I get round the corner. It might seem like I'm doing rubbish now, which I technically am, but but like somehow I always seem to manage to improve. Like I guess just doing lap after lap after lap does seem to like do the trick, and gradually you start finding places you can make up time, or like trying to cut those corners without cutting them, sort of thing. Like getting as much like inside line as you can, but without cause in a corner, cut like that. <laughs> Annoyingly. <laughs> or like just trying to find the right speeds and the right gears to take the corners in and such it all. All the variables add up to sort of getting a better lap time. I just like completely zoned out there and went straight on off the track.
I don't even. <laughs> so yeah, my lap times have just dropped off the the earth completely. Never mind the the board. <laughs> It's like, dang it, I need to focus. I keep like zoning out and it's just... Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to set a faster lap in if that happens. It's like I need to zone in or <laughs> rather than zone out. Well, crap. <laughs> I'm totally not tired at all or anything. <laughs> tired enough that my eyelids were closing there and then I just like shunted into a wall. And again, this is why. You, this is why you do this during practice and not during the actual week stuff. <laughs> the qualifying and the race. Besides, uh, it always seems to end up being the case that I end up feeling like a bit sleepy or tired during the afternoon. So, uh, afternoon, well, I guess it's early evening here now, but then come, say, a few hours from now, I end up feeling awake and manage to stay up half the night. Well, half the night and morning. Which you wouldn't think when I'm like sitting here effectively drifting off to sleep and drifting off the track. <laughs> I've even got a drink next to me and that doesn't seem to be helping keeping me awake. I need to like get into the, the zone of focusing and like not focus too much so that the track just becomes a blur and yeah. <laughs> Like keeping talking seems to be doing the trick, but at the same time, keeping talking is going to distract me from actually keeping focus, so... <laughs> hey there, buddy. And the first thing buddy says is, why are you so much louder in here than, you, than on Discord? Well, on here I'm using my Xbox's headset mic that works only with the Xbox One controller. And that and the fact that it's set to microphone volume of 100, but my headset I have for the laptop is a much better headset, like a proper sort of headset with both ears rather than just one side. And also the fact that, well even it's set to be like, it's all 100% volume like in the settings and on Discord settings, so... I don't know why it's like really quiet on Discord. I guess it's a bit like Angel's mic, it seems to be really quiet like... Well for her both on Discord and stream unless she moves it like right in front of her face probably. Maybe just a couple of mic derps I guess that they don't seem to want to behave like mic should. Bloody says I have you at 200% on Discord though. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know you do. I don't know why. <laughs> Discord just doesn't seem to like my mic. I don't know why I got done for going off wide there when even the racing line goes off wide. It's like one of those parts of the track that's like, are you sure this is in the right place?
In that time I'd deflect it off the wall because I turned br briefly to have a, s a sip of juice. <laughs> Even though I was like confident in my ability to keep the car going down the straight, but yeah, I still managed to smack it into the wall. Oh hey there, Blessed as well. And Blessed says, please note if your Xbox One controller can be plugged into your PC, you can use the Xbox headphones on the PC. Uh, well, it should be able to, but the thing is my connection cable that I've got the plug and play one, it seems to be a bit dodgy since I had it. Like one time it managed to drop off my desk and landed like connection first, which kind of bent it, but I, I did manage to bend it back into shape. And, but yeah. <laughs> also, Blessed, can you whisper me that link so I can open it up on mobile? Because, obviously, I can't check those links in my chat on the Xbox snapped chat at the side. <laughs> and Bloody says she's got a 360 controller and then she's put dot 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 headset. <laughs> so I don't know if that's in response to whatever picture Blessed has just put there. I also don't know if whisper messages show up in the Twitch chat that I have at the side here or not, like, on the Xbox Snap Tap. So yeah, Blessed, can you, like, whisper me that image link, please, for science, so that I can, like, see if that shows up on through there or not. Like, if it shows the whisper, I'll know to, like, check the whisper on my phone so I can actually just click on the link. Alright, your headset for PC is a 360 one. Well, the headset for the Xbox One is similar to the Xbox 361, but it's less grainy sort of thing, like... It's like the headsets on the Xbox 360 were always a bit grainy side, like... People that I'd been speaking to for the best part of a year through, like, GTA before, the moment we started talking to them through Skype on, like, much clearer headset audio, they sounded completely different people. So, that shows you how different the audio can sound through the Xbox 360 headset. There is a an Xbox One version of the same headset that you get now as well that has the the actual bendable adjustable bits, whereas this Xbox One headset is literally just a sort of still headset. You don't get any adjustments. Like, if it doesn't fit your head, then you're kind of screwed. Or you're going to you're gonna have to go and buy the other one. Let me pause this here just so I can check Blessed's Twitch thing. Because the, the whisper did indeed show up on the side and I see you put a kappa face on it. And now I just have to... Oh, there we go. I was going to say, now I just have to rely on the Twitch app actually being able to load the things. Yes, I'd like to open that. Uh, Bloody said it's a turtle beach. Ah, so... Oh, right. <laughs> so the, the image that Blessed had... A tag had posted the whole time was the more you know. I I paused t to check that. <laughs> Welp. And then also the fact that my stream decides to not go to ch chat only mode. Chat only, there we go. <laughs> no wonder I put a cap on the end for the more you know. <laughs> it just about made a. C Oh wait, l let me check that. And okay, Octo. Did I just make a second? I did. <laughs> Although that, that dent that I put in there is more of a side scrape, whereas the first one was a direct uh, impact. <laughs> so that's that's two in a row into that same section of barrier. That, that pretty much sums up how well this time trial is going at this point. <laughs> Right, let, let, let me try and like actually put in a decent lap that's better than the the 146 dead that I could have had or should have had had I not cut the final corner. <laughs> and welcome to everyone that's watching my stream currently. I've got seven viewers it says, so... Hello to y'all. <laughs> I know that bloody blessed and octos are three of those viewers, so I guess the other four are either passers by or lurkers. Or both.
and I was maybe a bit too overly cautious on the brakes back then. But yeah, the, the thing about using my Xbox One One controller and headset for my laptop would be the fact that, like I was saying about the cable being, like the cable did get bent, but I managed to bend it back into shape, and it it works better on if you leave the controller on to charge when you're not touching it. But the moment you pick it up to to go and do anything, if you move it around too much, it tends to disconnect, and that's not what you want happening during playing a game, especially a racing game like this. You kind of need to have your controller active and not actively cutting out as it is. <laughs> I do have another like couple of batteries that come with a charging cable. Well, I'd assume that they do anyway. It's the the Venom ones, I think. I've got like a same like similar sets for the Xbox 360 controllers as well, but yeah. I'll need to like sort of use those as well and if they come with a cable it might actually work better. Unless of course it's it's bent at the controller's edge, which I'm fearing it isn't. <laughs> but yeah, if I do wonder what would happen if I connected the the Xbox One to the laptop through the USB and used that headset, like would it sound much better on Discord or not? Or would it sound poor quality because my laptop doesn't like headsets? I don't know what the case might be. Yeah, that was a 147.6, I still need to work on that <laughs> a lot. Now, I don't know why that went up to fourth there. I'm sure when I shifted up a gear it was for going to third, but maybe I'd already shifted up to third and accidentally up shifted to fourth when I was a bit too early to do that. Dang it, <laughs> I'd managed so well to cut those last few corners and then I screw up on that one. It was just like ever so slightly enough to trigger it. That can be when it starts to get irritating when you know that you've like not fully cut the corner but the game slaps the invalidated lap on you anyway. Dang it. <laughs> the car just got away from me there and then went off the track just enough to trigger that. Well these have been a useless 20 laps so far with a personal best of 147.3 which is about 3 seconds off where I want to be.
think I might do the uh, either up to 25 or 30 laps around here potentially before then doing a practice race and see if I fare any better. Because as it went with the last time around on the Friday, I managed to do a like I got to a certain point time-wise during the time trial, but then like I did a practice race and managed to actually improve, and then. When I went back to the time trial, I think I further improved on that still, so it's like it's almost as if doing the race in some ways can actually like help, I guess. But at the same time, the race can take like a bit of time as well, and I still need to do another track yet, so if I did do that, it would have to be soon, and well, just the fact that sort of. If I was doing the time trial afterwards for this same track, I'd need to like just put in a few laps, and that's even if I did make an improvement. So it seems that following the racing line out there is not leaving the track or penalising you, but if you like, there's been times where I've been inside that racing line sort of arch that goes out over the track, and if you're inside it seems to penalise you for leaving the track, which is quite annoying. <laughs> but yeah, you can like do this without any penalty at all, <laughs> which I'm glad they didn't make a penalty for that because that would be further annoying. Right, that was a 146.7, so that was like, I don't know if that's a second up or, a, well it says half a second up, so, but it was a, wow, did it? That was exactly a second up on the previous lap I done. I went from a 147.777 to a 146.777. All the sevens, <laughs> evidently. A step in the right direction, but still 1.7 seconds off of like the time that I had hoped to aim for. One forty six point Surprised that didn't tell me off for leaving the track there. Well, I suppose it's not so much leaving the track, but more like gaining an advantage by using the runoff areas. But that was just being a bit late on the brakes and running off wide.
And that was a lot slower, but like I said, I had that sort of running off wide bit. So that definitely cost me time. An improvement, but I'm not going to say much else because I want to see where it goes. Oh, really? Of course I had to throw away the lap time round there of all places. I mean I'm still faster, but it's an invalidated lap now. I guess I'll see, it's like... I think it was Maestro that once said about the regarding when you go from an invalidated lap that's still faster it's, it's like the, it's like being on a game show and it's like here's what you could have won in terms of like here's your faster lap that you could have had if you hadn't invalidated it I managed to mess up that last corner anyway and screw up the lap enough that it wasn't a faster overall lap either way Dang it. Well, it definitely cost me that lap. Like, it didn't even need to invalidate me there because I pretty much invalidated my own lap by running off and jumping over the curb. Even when slammed on the brakes, it was still not enough slowing down. And that was definitely enough to invalidate the lap. Oh, come on! <laughs> Just when that lap felt like it was going right and then that happens again in the same place.
Dang it, once again. Yep. <laughs> it's like I managed to get through the other part, but then once again I managed to break too late into there and screw up that lap. <laughs> And that would have been a low 1 minute 46. Great. <laughs> and already I've essentially destroyed that lap. Right, that's good to know. Going too wide out there and validates your lap. I'll keep that in mind for future outings off the track. And by outings, I mean off track excursions. Dang, at the moment I turned right there, and you just like ever so slightly turned too right that it was going to cut the track. It's like I seem to be managing consistent 147s, but I struggling to get into the 146 because I keep like so either 
shifting down too much or like being on the brakes too much or too little or hmm, it's not quite not really consistent despite what the times show of being 147 so in, in that random 148 Oh wait, that's a 146, sorry, that 146 too, and then just 147s from that point on. And then there's this corner that you ride up on it too much, and then it seems to spin you around, but it didn't that time. And, nope, and you'll notice my car's bashed up from the shunts I had earlier with the, the barrier. <laughs> And that's probably why it's a good thing I did the the view replay earlier on, it's when my car was still intact. <laughs> really? Like I'm trying to put in a lap time here and the game's just taking every opportunity it wants to throw the invalidated lap at me. It's like you can have an invalidated lap and you can have an invalidated lap. Everybody gets an invalidated lap. <laughs> That's essentially what it's doing. I do like when the tail end kicks out like that and you seem to drift nicely around the following corners but it's like too out of control to be able to pull that off each and every lap. And I have had some pretty sweet overtakes doing that through that that section of the track but again it's one of those like if you pull it off you pull it off but it's not something you can just like attempt to do each and every time unless you're in like a sort of someone that could do like a drift in sort of thing that could probably put that into a drift through that entire portion of the track I guess and that would have been a 145.9 Why can't I set lap times like that on valid laps? Oh yeah, that's because the game keeps throwing the invalidated lap at me. And that time through there I was just on the brakes far too much at times, like on the brakes, off the brakes. And that could have been taken a lot better if the car didn't like slide and effectively go from a near uh, stationary start. Not quite stationary but it did lose a fair bit of speed from being, from having that sort of slide. Okay, that was. This isn't going to be a great lap anyway, but the fact I almost cut, like, between running out wide on that sort of section and then almost cutting the other corner. And yeah, this is only a 147.1. And of course, that was going to be invalidated. <laughs> And like the irritating thing is that these tracks like this that 
seem to invalidate you at any given opportunity. Come the race, it'll be so, uh, like a walk in the park, essentially. Like half, it seems as if the the track bar, the track's sort of boundaries get put more outwards, and you can run off a bit more or or get away with going so sort of over some of those corners and. Yeah. And not helping the whole focusing on the track thing is interruptions from people coming into the room that shouldn't be coming into the room because they're very much aware that I'm streaming. Because I have my door shut and I don't really have my room door shut unless I'm going to be streaming. It's like for the most part I have my room door closed like over but not fully shut closed unless I'm going to be streaming and in this case it's fully closed over so it's like even if I taped a big sign to the door or a big flashing light saying I'm streaming, go away, that still wouldn't do anything. <laughs> it's like I might as well tape a you're welcome to enter sign on the door, it would have the same effect as a do not enter sign. And yep, that time I ran enough wide enough there but this is a rubbish lap anyway. I'm going to make the next lap the last lap, then I'm going to try a practice, like, race and see if I can set any better lap times when racing. That and, uh, in fact, let me check. It's now 7.20pm and I, I have like an hour 40 minutes left of streaming. So... I'll need to be a sort of relatively short practice race, but I might make it. Well, I don't know. It's if it's 15 laps, that could easily be half an hour. I might have to make it 10 laps, cause yeah, I think I'll make it a 10 lap race, or maybe even 8 laps. I don't know yet. Yep, and I'm going to exit out there because I was running wide. And that is just... That's a rubbish lap time, honestly. It's like I managed to set that 1.45.9 on a... What was an invalidated lap because the game's a dick. I'm just going to say that. And... The 1.46 dead that I had was an invalidated lap as well, so... Hmm. Salty indeed. And there's how that lap time puts me on the lead, the leaderboards. <laughs> Nowhere near, like literally two seconds off. Seven seven five seven seven seven. But yeah, two seconds off where I wanted to be. And it's annoying because I know I can get, uh, like that 145.9 should have been a valid lap. But it wasn't because the game doesn't like me. Uh, I can only assume it's the Sekito GP because international and national doesn't have any records set in terms of friends only. But before I move on to that, let me go to... I believe it's Seoul. Yeah, let's do a quick race weekend around Emola. We don't have time for 
15 laps, so let's look at the time here, it's 7.22 now. Well, 10 laps at under 2 minutes, hmm, it should be under 20 minutes I guess. And then we'll definitely have to move on to the next track and hope we don't spend the whole stream on it. Because I'd like to do a practice race on that one as well. And yeah, it's just the race I'm going into and starting at the back so I can like fight my way through the field effectively. And I'll probably end up pausing around about two or three laps in just to check what times the AI set in and see if that's like relative to what kind of times I was managing in time trial and if that's like as good as what people's times are on the board, but I don't think it will be. It might be around that forty five, forty six mark I reckon. But yeah, here goes something. <laughs> A lot of them seem to be in those Audis as well. And yep, I knew that was going to be early. <laughs> like you have to try and time that right. But yeah, as I said, this is all practice. Like. I'd rather have this happen now than tonight during the league races. That was a slower start, but I didn't get a penalty for it. <laughs> and once again, the AI is just all over the shop. Causing all kinds of unpredictable behaviour. Like, they just throw their shelf across the track, they don't even care. Even if it means throwing their shelf into each other or you. <laughs> Apparently the stream's lagging again, but it does that every so often and then goes back to just being fine, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I was hugging that inside carb a bit too much there, but I got round the corner and gained a place. It's like the difference being between the ra this practice race here and the actual so when you do online races in terms of the league racing tonight is that like say if I cut the track it'll just give me a warning about it but when you're playing online it gives you an actual track penalty that can like hold you back and cause you to lose ground or places so it's like I'd rather like see where I can go on the track during practice races and time trial than say during the live lobbies. I'm surprised I like I ran off wide there but I'm surprised I didn't run into those two cars. <laughs> and also a thing I need to be careful on the brakes. Okay then, game. <laughs> At first it seemed that my car hit that car and that car behaved like a concrete block and spun me around but then his car also stopped dead as well and that happened. <laughs>
Come on, let's make this happen. I like how he slammed into me there and sent himself off the track. It's like, well that's what you get for trying to turn in when I stuck my car there. <laughs> you left the door open, I went for it. That doesn't mean that you can then turn in and expect to not do that. <laughs> the AI at times. And there was a 146.3. And I'm glad this is a practice race, because caught in the corner like that probably co would have given him about 30 seconds worth of penalties. And if I'd, if I'd bounced off someone like that, and well, I know I would have got the track penalty anyway, but like if I'd bounced off someone like that to get past, I would have like slowed right down, wait until they got back past, and then continued on. It's so only against the AI, because the AI raced dirty enough that there's not really any reason to race nicely against them when they're quite happily, they quite happily want to slam you off the track or into each other or... <laughs> he even kept his foot in it even though he just ran off into the gravel. You could say that I'm getting these faster lap times due to being in the slipstream, which would be a valid point. But at the same time also proves that I can still go around this track fast enough and to be able to set these faster lap times. Like that was a 146.0, but I'm getting all the slipstream. And slipstream causes you to run wide like that. I was just looking behind to see where they were going because I thought maybe one of them was coming through on the inside.
So I deflected off of him and then he decided to keep his foot in it and then cut the entire corner t to get back past me. Find out where he's slower than you. Keep pushing. See if you can take him under braking. Time's a little bit inconsistent. Focus on those braking markers. Stay sharp. You can do it. Wow, the car just completely did that on its own there. And yes, I did gain that place, but as I said, this is practice racing against the AI, and I've already had one of them do that to me, so screw you, AI. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was a 145.8 purely because I was in the slipstream of that car in front going down the start finish straight and then also when I was on the brakes there the car just seemed to snap to the left like without me even having a say in the matter I'm just going to pause here for a quick second to check my phone because I have a text but I might be a bit late replying to this text now uh, and sent well I say sent, I pressed on send but it takes that moment to actually send <laughs> now it's sent, let's continue. Looks like there's one on your tail. Start defending your position. Cover the inside line in the braking areas. It's like you don't say. <laughs> a few mistakes. It's like you could probably edit that line of text and then just like take that segment of him saying that and then edit it together as like a montage of me just like 
having all the mistakes ever. <laughs> Giggity? <laughs> that just sounded so wrong in my mind. <laughs> Live. Probe and feel your presence. <laughs> Let me pause there because I want to actually check the lap times because I forgot to do that. So yeah, that 145, like 145.8, 145.7, even 145.6, I see the the best laps from the top 10 AI, and then there's mine there, that 145.8, that would uh, slot in nicely with them. <laughs> But if you look at the, all the dots on the map, they're running in quite a tight little group together, so no wonder they're getting those kind of laps. That was a sweet move. Great stuff. I can't say the same about his, he just did to me what the other one did, but... Uh, whereas I'd kind of closed the door, he kind of slotted himself in there anyway. That might have looked like I pushed him off, but I didn't. He just ran himself out wide. Otherwise I would have felt that vibrate on the controller if I'd made contact. The AI seems to do that at times as well, like... For the most part they're quite... Like sometimes they'll just move out your way as if you're like coming through and then they'll suddenly reclose that door again. It's like, yeah, if I'd pulled that move off during online race, that would have penalised me for running out ridiculously wide there. But he kind of forced me out wide, so it should be him getting the track penalty. Oh, hey there, DJ Endicate. I've not seen you around recently. Have, have you been in my streams before? <laughs> it's like, I know you've been in the other streams, but... Well, I guess you have been in my streams before, but not for a long time now, so, yeah, how, how's it going? But yeah, you see what I mean about being able to effortlessly like glide across cutting those corners without risk. Or without losing out. Like, when I ran out wide that I pointed out before to overtake that car, it gave me the the invalidated lap, but so if for everywhere else it hasn't. Even though if in, well in time trial it does give you invalidated lap if you do that. Once this practice race is over with, I'm going to go back to time trial again and do a quick sort uh, of... Well, I guess it'll be a quick, what, five, ten minute? Not five or ten minutes, five laps even. And I 
I don't know why the car didn't decide to break freeway there, even though I, th I felt I braked enough. <laughs> yeah, and DJ Ender he says it's been going good, he's been busy with dance, so I don't really have the time anymore to watch the live streams. Yeah, I do remember you talking about that before actually, but when you were able to come and watch a lot of the streams between like, I think it was the likes of sort of me, Blessed, well, not as much mine, but I know you've been around like Blessed, Ashy and Ices, and I don't know if you've been on Angel streams actually, but I know you've been on to mine before. Anyway, that was how our race went there. <laughs> Practice race anyway, so let's return to race central and I'll need to put the time trial time back to being what it was before. Oh, I have a text back, I didn't think I was... Uh, I'm just texting Angel actually because she's at work right now. She just she was on her break there, and I say there because I think she'll be finished with her break now. Uh, right, time trial. <laughs> right, it's still set to Emily anyway. Let's see if I can't improve on that rubbish one forty six point seven 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 that I got before. Now that I've had a practice race under my arm, I guess. <laughs> Probably just butchered the, the saying there. But yeah, if I do five laps around here, see if I can improve or not, and then move on to the next track and try and not spend as long on there, considering I'm going to be finished up the stream about just after 9 o'clock my time, and it's currently 7.44pm. So we have about an hour 50 minutes left of running at this point. And as I always say, here goes something. Oh, come on. <laughs> of all the places it starts throwing the invalidated lap at me. It had to be there, the one place where I've only had that twice, and the time that I had it once was when I did a, a first science moment of running out wide there on a bad lap to see if it would do that. You have to be careful about running out wide like that there as well, otherwise that might invalidate the lap. And look at that, 146.3 right off the bat. But yeah, I bounced off the wall a bit there because I was trying to scratch my head whilst controlling the car with one hand. <laughs> All the way up until when I crossed the line.
Oh dang it. <laughs> it's like the annoying, the annoying thing about first gear is it seems to be like if you give it too much power it'll spin you out and if you don't give it enough power it'll start spinning you out the moment you try and apply any power. <laughs> so it's like either way you're going to start, either way you're going to sort of sacrifice time. And DJ indicated he was saying before about he was he has been on Angel Streams before but only for like five minutes because then he had to get back to his dance and he has to go again now sorry and can't stay for the rest of the stream. Has six hours of dance rehearsal tonight and my dance school is thirty minutes away so I have to head head off. That's no worries then, thanks for stopping by DJ indicate. Maybe I'll see you again soon, rather than like in a few months, but as you said, you are busy with your dance stuff nowadays, so no worries if you can't stop by streams as often as you once used to be able to. And so far that's three laps of invalidated laps, or three laps of uh, crap essentially. Well, the first lap was an improvement but invalidated. <laughs> and now this one's gone and invalidated. And that second one I lost time due to that section I mentioned about. Thanks game, thanks a bunch. Wait, was that a... nope. That 146.2 was on an invalidated lap seemingly. I don't even remember where invalidated that lap. <laughs> as far as I was concerned, I thought that was an actual timed lap because it showed the split times, so... Validating lap places on that track is just enough to make it to render it pointless, really. That you can't even put in a decent enough lap without. Oh, thanks, honking car outside. But yeah, you can't even put in a decent enough lap without running off the track, so screw it, I'm done. Moving on to Sakito. As much as I'm looking forward to this track. 
the atrocity that it is. <laughs> you can tell I'm thrilled by the tones in my voice. Do I even have a note of a time, but I did notice that the friends have times, and once again it'll be Shadow Mix time, we'll be aiming for that 144.1. But I doubt I'll get anywhere near to that. <laughs> And Brown's, he's just like flying just around these tracks for the most part, and he's on a control pad as well. But yeah, I need to go into my garage here. For this one, I think I'm going to load the Hockenheim setup, the one that I previously mentioned has the wrong way. Is the front downforce turned down to be in zero, and the, f the longitude weight bias set? just to see if that makes a difference at, at all or not. So yeah, let's come right the way down to Sikito. The Sikito GP track there, and save. Uh, why did that back out that far? Or maybe I pressed back too much there. Just make sure it's got that one loaded in now. Even though it's no different than the Hockenheim one, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he, there it looks like Suzuka, but when you actually take to the track, it's nothing like Suzuka. It's it's vaguely based. We have just over an hour to see how we perform around here and then move on to a practice race if I have the time. Apologies if you heard like a rustling sound there, I was itching my beard actually. Right, let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, and the first thing that I don't like right away is the fact that they cut out that chicane in favour of just making it one long swooping corner. I'd rather have the chicane, that's what makes the track the track. It's not, it's like they've got the track section for the chicane on the track itself, but th there's no variant that actually uses it. Or at least I don't think there is, I don't know if the shorter tracks might actually know that I think about it. But this is the GP track, the one that should be using it. Oh yeah, and this is another track that's notorious for being for like being one of those to slap the invalidated lap on you the moment you run off wide and it thinks you've gained a heck of an advantage that it deems you unfair. Even though the fact that it's giving it a track penalties is completely unfair. It just feels weird this track, like it's Suzuka, but it's not Suzuka, <laughs> because it's not quite there. Like the sort of the landscape around it and all that's completely different from the actual landscaping. And those grandstands back there that were way up on the hill, it's like, I don't know if they're real or not in terms of their real Suzuka. They should have been on the brakes a bit there. Yeah, unless you use that as a runoff, and does it penalise you? And yeah, this part being like that, it's like yeah, there's sometimes when, say, if I'm playing an F1 game, I might do that for fun just to see what kind of speed you get. But having it as an actual track section, then it's kind of odd. So I'm used to sort of coming into there and being on the brakes rather than just flying through that section. And there we go, our first invalidated lap. <laughs> because I got like two wheels on the dart and it decided, nope, you've gained an advantage.
I just realised one of the reasons why that's not why it's not Suzuka like like I said it's vaguely based on Suzuka. Wow, really game. I could have I like easily lost about a second there being on the dirt and slowing right down from that and it still invalidates the lap. And I thought F1 2013 was bad for slapping the sort of cut corner or sort of lap invalidated penalties on you. But no, this is worse. This is a lot worse. This is like, oh, I see your wheel went over the line by about a millimetre. I'm going to validate that lap now. But then you can do that and it's like, nope, that's perfectly fine within the rules. Game logic at its finest, really. It basically sums that one up. The fact you can't go flat out through there, I don't know if you can in a Formula A car on this game, but you can't in this car. And even there, you can't like fully go flat out, you have to either lift off or be on the brakes slightly. But yeah, this section of the track here is like a much more tighter incline, I think. And well, the fact that it would be going over to the... Nope, I turned that the wrong way. Yeah, it would be going over to the right and then it would actually go a left and then this right into this... Uh, like into this left-right section sort of thing. There'd be a right-hand turn into that bit first, but there isn't. Oh well actually, thinking back to it, maybe no actually. Trying to think of like how Suzuka, Suzuka actually is now compared to this sort of alternate reality version of Suzuka. <laughs> it's like yeah, the, a lot of nice works went into making the track look nice and all, but the track itself has nothing on Suzuka. I'd rather have Suzuka than Sakito. This uh, the made up version for the game. It's like I don't think Mon the Monaco one doesn't quite have that problem or not fully anyway. It's like the the Azure Coast Grand Prix circuit as it's called on here instead of Monaco. It's sort of near like as close to Monaco as they could get really. Like maybe track wise or general layout, not so much. Jeez. That's definitely something you don't want to be doing around there. Pouncing over those curbs like that. I'm thinking about it, I suppose. No, I'm, I'm definitely certain that it's the left first before this right on the on the real track. Yeah, I'm definitely certain of that now. Now look, they invalidated my lap for putting wheels into the gravel and the in the grass and everything. Like I already lost a few seconds of time. Was that not enough of a penalty? My voice probably sounded a bit crap there because I needed to clear my throat, but I didn't want to mute mid sentence to do so. <laughs> it's like I'm already so done with this track, it's just. These are like league races tonight, I'd rather just get over and done with, honestly. This track, these track choices are just. yeah. I mean, M was a great track, and the real Suzuka's a great track, but. And well, I just didn't seem to want to have it in terms of this car and track, and and then this one is just like, oh, you want to improve? Never mind.
I just thought of a pun that's probably quite bad, but because this track's called Sack Ito, it's more like whoever made this track is getting the Sack Ito. <laughs> and there's your pun for the day. <laughs> Leave that one to sink in. Well, dang it. I just pressed all kinds of buttons there. Give me my view back without the rear mirror, because that's distracting of that up there. I went to itch my head whilst trying to... I don't know if it was on a corner or on a brief straight and ran out of track to do that in. And I just went on the brakes there as if it was the normal version of the truck. <laughs> I mean, it, it let me get round that corner without braking or slowing down later on in it, but still. And really? <laughs> this track could be worse than Imola for the track but anyways. It's like, even at Imola I could see that a lot of my car was off the track in most cases, whereas on this one it's like, oh you've put a wheel off the track, penalty. It's like you've clearly gained an advantage by putting that wheel through the gravel and slowing you right down. <laughs> This is more turned into just a rant about how bad the invalidated lap system is in this game. <laughs> and I know before it used to be worse in terms of that if you left the track at all, like say I'm doing now, you'd get penalised for it. Whereas now you can at least rejoin that and finish your lap, but your lap's pretty much destroyed at that point anyway if you have a off-track excursion of that length.
Oh, but on that occasion it did tell me off for doing that. I guess it deemed me as having an unfair advantage. <laughs> you can tell I'm just so done with this track already. It's... It's just a waste of time at this point. I'd rather just leave it until the league races and get it over with and be glad to see the back of it and hope they never see it again. Oh, at least not for a long time. It's like I get the feeling that tonight's tracks are going to end my consistent run of 10th place finishes that means that I've scored at least a point in every race of the season so far. Like, I don't think, I can't see that happening really tonight. It's like I'm so much done with this track that I'll try doing one more lap that if it gets invalidated I'm just going to quit out essentially. But hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> hopefully the game lets me actually have a lap. <laughs> but yeah, I'll do one more lap and then I'm going to do a practice race and just put it to 15 laps. And yep, I'm just going to do a practice race now. <laughs> it's like the moment you get on that car, but it just throws you right off the track. And that was trying to like ease off the accelerator to turn in tighter. Well, this is going to be a fun race, because the AI is going to be so much quicker than me around there. It's a shame, because I'm like, when it comes to the Forza games, or like Gran Turismo, I can go around Suzuka really like well. Like Forza, I guess, more notably, because I've got all the Forza games, but then you get Sakito on here, and it's like, really? This this is okay. <laughs> right, quick go weekend, bring it down here to Sakito. So there's the differences. You've got the, the GP one that's the full circuit, and then the internationals like that. It's like the top path without the bridge crossing over. And then the national one can kind of does have the crossing over segment. Hmm, interesting. And then the sprint one actually has that lower section. I don't know if that's with or without the chicane, but I'm not really bothered at this point. <laughs> no, let's put that up to 15 laps on this occasion because I've got more time to, pl to like be able to play this. Right, let's see how this goes, <laughs> or doesn't, as the case might end up being. So you can see already one of the AI cars managed to smash through the the signs and then just the fact they're all over the place there. <laughs> the AI for you, they just 
smashy bashy everything. And it probably was my part that pushed that car off, but also when it comes to racing against people online, I'm not going to just put someone off the track like that. If someone's in front of me, I'll slow down and make sure we both get around the corner. I mean, look at that. He just blatantly cut that corner to get past me. And yeah, that time was enough of a shunt to actually give me a warning about it. Which is understandable. <laughs> <laughs> cutting the track, aye, eh? on the outside. Yeah, cutting the track on the outside makes a whole bunch of sense. because I sort of kept, I put my foot in it again as I was running out wide. After this practice race, I'm going to tweak a few settings on the the MR setup and try doing five more laps around there or something. See how the, t the tweaks come off. Alright, yeah, there is no breaking point through there other than being lightly on the brakes to make sure you don't run off white. 
Not that that much when I'm all over the place anyway. And they're doing 146 lap times. Good luck for me getting anywhere near that times. <laughs> I don't even know what happened there, my eyes closed because I'm like feeling a bit dozy just from like not being bothered about this track and <laughs> it's like I got bored of it pretty much the moment I set wheel on it, I was going to say set foot but even then it's like walking around the track would be would probably be a better way of getting a lap time without invalidating the lap. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to restart this thing or not. <laughs> so I'm going to quit out and just put it down to 10 laps because I've already done like 5 laps there essentially. I'm going to set it to 10 laps and then just do that. Right, let's see how part 2 goes with 10 laps. <laughs> and then after that I'll go back to doing the ammo thing. Well, let's see how this one goes. Green, green, green. Got off the start a bit better there, but yeah. <laughs> it's probably going to be the only thing going for me in this race. I mean, look at that, they're just knocking up all the boards or smashing through them. Look, they ran off wide there and just like lost momentum. And on that occasion I just got glued to the back of that car and didn't have much choice. Really? I'm no, I... I'm 
meant to restart, not skip to the end. <laughs> Restarting because I want Dex to be able to race, not just sit at the back and not gain anything at all. So, might as well be doing time trial again if I'm going to spend the race on my own. Okay then, let me um, view replay of that. Speed speed up the start bit, even though it makes them all sound like lawn wars or something. I hope, I'm hoping it gives me a good camera view of that because I just about scooped right underneath a, that Aston Martin. <laughs> yeah, let me rewind that section. Oh, so I still have this open to be able to pause it. Okay then. If I go slow enough, then you'll see this bit here. Wait, did that like start going up before I even got there? Somewhat, yeah. Let me X to change camera. Yeah, the rear end of that car started going up before the car was technically under it, like I guess you could see that that's like the collision model being a bit wider than the car itself, meaning that it thought I was going underneath the car before it even got underneath the car, effectively. <laughs> Switch back to that camera view and watch that in real time again. Like okay then, that half that was a thing. Anyway, <laughs> continuing on. It's like already within the first few corners. This tr this track is simply outstanding. They don't even care about forcing the AI off the track. They're just all over the place themselves. There's. There's not really any point to trying to race clean against them at this point. Oh look, there's the car that managed to wedge under. Probably won't be able to do that again though. Cut in the track. There was a boy. There was blatantly overtaking someone whilst being completely off the track. It's like that probably would have been like a minute worth of penalties if I tried doing that online against people. But as I've been saying, I'm not going to be pulling moves like that on people online. I'd back out of the back out of it if I didn't think I was going to get through. rather than keep my foot in it and run massively wide off the track just to overtake. But the AI don't seem to have any issue at all with doing that to you, so I don't have any issue doing it against them. Also the fact that getting on that gravel just seems to make your car turn in the way that you don't want it to go. Which is irritating also. It's 
It's like, see, look at that. He's just been forced wide by another one of the AI, the AI cars. And there goes all those places because they went into the gravel. It's like race at Sakito, they said. It'll be fun, they said. It's like you can tell why there's not much time trial times on the board for this time around. There's probably people who just couldn't be bothered with M1 and Sakito. In between that and the fact that and a bit of the invalidated laps has something to do with it as well. They're probably just like, nope, or or trying trying to even put in a lap and it's just like invalidated right away. Like, yeah, I just purposely swerved to make sure that I collected him as I rejoined the track there. But yeah, you can tell I'm just done. Alright, <laughs> oh, I need to fast forward the lap. Yeah, screw it, I'll just let it. No, in fact, I can't be bothered. I'm just going to fast forward that because it sounds funny when they're all sped up. And the stream's apparently lagging again anyway. Probably too much information for it to handle. They definitely sound like micro machines or like RC like remote control toy cars of some kind when they're like when they're sped up like that on fast forward. <laughs> Let's see what happened there with I just sort of ran wide through and smashed through that board. 
and then deflected off of there, got caught on a curve and just... Yep, and collected him. <laughs> Surprised he was able to just keep going as effortlessly as he, as he did there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... no. No. I don't care about that track anymore. <laughs> right, to finish up the stream, I'm going to go back to M1 and make a... I'm going to try the Hockenheim tweaks that I pointed out there. Try that on the MOS setup and see what kind of difference it makes. If I can't do a better lap or not with that sort of thing. I mean, there are probably other tweaks that could be made to it, but... I don't know if the time or the patience for that anymore. And given how well it's went so far with trying to get in a better lap, it's like... I don't want to spend all this time messing around with the setup to then have have it just mess up like that. Let me set the track back to MOS so it doesn't load up the MOS setting again. Right, my garage load setup MLA. Right, so for that one we turn that down to zero and then we turn this right down to fifty two point three. I don't think there's really much more. Like, there are probably things here I could change, but yeah, <laughs> as I said, I'd rather just not touch anything else. Yeah, let's just save that as is. No, it's circuits I want. Oh, wait, it's, you have to do specific location, don't you? Because I can always easily change it back. Or just load up like the Road America set up again and save it back over. Right, so previously we got that 147.777. Alright, it was a 146.777 that we got as well, but that rubbish time compared to the 144.775 that I was hoping to be aiming for, so still a couple of seconds off where I'd hoped to be. I'm going to turn my room light on as well now. And let there be light. <laughs> it's like after eight, after half 8pm here and it was getting kind of dark. Maybe having the light on I might be a bit more awake and focused, who knows. Sorry about that, I was just taking a moment there to finish off what was left of the juice that I had and to move my seat a bit closer to the TV just so I could see that a little bit better because I was sat back a little bit. Anyway, let's see how this goes now with the adjusted tweaks. <laughs> like, will they help or not? Oh, come on. <laughs> so I go to brake and the car just twitched right, like literally to the right, so much that it cut that inside corner before the ones that I know were each that end up being cut. So what could have been a potentially good lap, because that felt like a really nice start to the lap has just been thrown away completely. And that was probably going to be a 145 easily, or a or a much better 146. 
Thanks, game, for screwing me over in a different way. Always seems to be the case. It screws you over in enough ways, and then once you come back to a track later on, it starts finding different ways to screw you over that it did in the first time around. Yeah, see, look at that. That was a 146.3 with a mistake. A, cost, a very costly mistake at that. Had, th had that mistake not happened, that was easily a 145 of some kind. So that either tells me that the tweaks worked, or I don't know what that tells me. I need to start setting lap times that aren't invalidated or messed up to find out. I like to think it helped, <laughs> but I guess I'll have to concentrate and find out. Okay, that was close there. I thought I was going to invalidate the lap on two occasions, or two different places. This definitely feels faster, I don't know if it feels as fast as the previous lap could have done, but I guess I'm about to find out. Oh, this is definitely faster. A 145.0, this is insanely faster. So those tiny little tweaks made a huge difference. I'm going to like go quite out just to rec for the sake of recording that time on the board now. I will jump back into the time travel after that because I want to see if I can go faster yet, but I'm looking forward to M1 now, <laughs> it's safe to say. Like I might actually be able to make improvements during the race per se. So I think that was faster than I went in the previous, like, the race that I'd done against the AI before that it like got me faster laps. Well, the faster laps that I got was through to, like, slipstreaming. Well, it puts me up to 235 on the global board, but I'm not too bothered about that one. Whereas on the Friends one, like, I'm still in the same place, but... Hmm, has Red Devil been on recording times? Or did Red Devil... Yeah, Red Devil's been on recording times. So I've just pipped Red Devil there. Because previously it went Shadow Mick then me with my 146 and Red Devil there has got a 45.6 so I'm like more than half a second up on him I guess or just half a second up on him. That's good to know. <laughs> I'm faster than someone I guess is in the league. I can't remember if Red Devil was one of the ones listed down the bottom here that had yet to set a time. I could check my friends list to see if he's currently online or... He probably will be online or... I don't know but... Yeah, let's jump back to the track then and record, see if I can't improve on that or... If not, I'm quite happy with that 145.0 time, that's where I wanted to be. Like, that's a lot closer to that, to that 144.7 and... Like, obviously, if I could take a half second off of that still, that would be nice, but... I'm fine with that 145 lap time. So like the car definitely feels a bit more responsive at times, but it still seems to have a mind of its own with snapping and going off the track or... Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
And I'm just going to hit the restart button on that one because I'd rather not go around the track again just in case I end up like having good a good run. <laughs> Take two, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to hit the restart button again. It's like... As much as I'd rather just keep going around the track at this point, I just kind of want to see if I can't put in a good uh, hot lap in one... Uh, as if I had like one shot to do a lap kind of thing. I guess kind of like one shot qualifying, but... In the sense that if I do set a good lap, I'll try and uh, improve on it, but... Yeah. I mean, this has felt kind of crappy so far, but... I'm just going to stick with it and see what kind of time I set and then go from there. Oh, I'm glad that didn't invalidate that lap then. I think I'm on for a huge improvement again. On top of what I've already like managed. And a huge improvement was had of 144.1. Holy hell, flap times. Now, I want to I want to view the replay back for that one. Uh, and it is starting from there, so yeah. 
there was times when, like, towards the end of that lap, I was like, please don't mess up, please don't mess up, because from the get-go I had that 1.6 second gain on what was a 1.46 lap time I managed to set on this sort of time trial run. So going from that, I'd already knew that I was into the 144s, but wasn't aware of how much. <laughs> so yeah, watching this, it's like, well, I can see, like, there's probably still a lot of improvement to be made there, but there's not always improvement to be made unless you're sort of on it, like, every corner of that track. But yeah, it seems that little setup tweak definitely helped, and I guess, like, between that and feeling a bit more focused than I was about two or three hours ago. Two or three hours ago I was practically sitting here fall, falling asleep and nodding off and just not getting anywhere really. But now I've made two massive leaps of improvements in the lap times going from that 146.7 up to a 145 knot and now I've went from that to a 144.1. I'm definitely pleased with those laps. Which is why I'm like watching this one back just to see like it was coming into here I thought I was about to run off the track and into the barrier and then being on the brakes into there I thought I was about to run off wide into the gravel but and even there like on that runoff area I was like oh please don't invalidate me now and yeah it just came together nicely in the end and across the line so there well across the line now. <laughs> I'll let it keep playing until it stops and then I'll continue from there. Right, I'll continue from here, see where this lap goes, but at this point I think I'll be like calling it quits and saying I don't think I can improve on what I just managed. Yep, I just massively messed that one up. The split time says I'm already like 6 tenths down, is that? Or well, 0.6 anyway. Right, I want to record that lap on the board now. <laughs> That's definitely a lap to be proud of. Considering I started from a 146.7 and at that point a few hours ago I was getting consistently bad 147s and 148s. And any time I got a 146 or a 145.9 was on invalidated laps, which was annoying. But now I've just like leaped over those times altogether and actually made a, a lap time to be proud of. So let's see where that one put, puts us in the global. Yeah, it shifts us up to 189th. And as I say, I'm not too bothered about the global ones, because it's the friends one here that I'm more concerned about, and that puts me six. And only 2.5 seconds off the fastest time, but I'm going to ignore Maestro's time because that's technically not the league times. And Renault Sport RS, is that one of the GT cars? Let me go and select car and see. Unless that's one of the new DLC cars, perhaps. Hmm, he might, he might switch car to that one if that is the case, but... Yeah, I guess if you take that 3.71 off of my time, that effectively puts me, what, 2.2 seconds off the fastest time? Like, I've never, like, I'm I'm used to being, like, 3 or 4 seconds off the fastest guys in the league, but being that fast, that's, that's something. <laughs> it's like I was, I was, like, 2 seconds off a of shadow mix time there, and then my 145.0 time, I'd say I noticed that Red Dead had been on set in that time and that I was faster than him, but now I'm just massively faster than them both. I'd like to think I could try and get for a 143 something, but I don't think that'll be happening today during the time trial, because I'll be wrapping up the stream here next actually at this point. I know that's just under the 3 hour mark, but there's not really much more I can do here. Like, I've, I've done everything I could potentially achieve, and I'm quite pleased with that result there. So, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what, 
point six of a second off that guy in the McLaren 12C and he can be ridiculously fast in the race like there's been times when I think he started up near the front and dropped to the back and then worked his way back up to the front again and I think he's come like second and third at times so I've, I'm effectively like not far off of his time for once but yeah I've said enough here about how like I could probably say a, a bit more about how pleased I am with that lap time but yeah <laughs> I think I've summarised that well enough so yeah I'm going to switch back over to here and we'll see that's now up to 93.03 hours played before I think it was 91 point something which I don't know why it thinks it's only 2 hours but uh, well I guess it doesn't take into account like being on the setup page I guess like well I guess it does take set up into account when it says when it has the engineering focus as well but then again I think that engineering focus down the bottom is actually yeah looking at that if you add the 34 and the 8 that would be 42 stick that onto there then yeah that would be like 100% focus wise whereas like the experience is broken down into your actual time spent racing or on track so yeah, <laughs> I never heard as many hours online compared to the community before but now that, like if I go to the community boards here a moment, in fact no I don't want to because that will change things and I don't want to have to redo, have to reset things or that. But yeah the community boards, a lot of them now are like DLC cars and I don't have the DLC, it's like I'd be tempted to get that Project Cars Game of the Year edition that comes with all the DLC plus extra, a couple of extra tracks I think, but that's like the only exception and I'd have to work out what the total price of the, all the DLC so far added up compared to the price of that game and work out if it's like worth getting the game again essentially just to have all the extra DLC for cheaper, or well I'd hope to think it anyway, but yeah I'm just rambling on about extra crap at this point and I don't need to be so if you've well I've got one viewer left on the stream and I've noticed that's fluctuated throughout the stream going from as little as one up to as many as eight or nine so yeah thanks to everyone that stopped by today I guess and I guess most notably Octo, DJ Endricate, Bloody and Blessed I think were the four that were in chat before and yeah, <laughs> I think that'll do it for my stream here today then, because it's just about, well it's 8.58, so it's just about 9pm here, and in which case I'll be going off to eat fairly soon around the next half an hour, so that I'm, because the league races are at half ten tonight, but unfortunately I don't think I'll be able to stream those anymore, because when we streamed them before they seemed to have an effect on not only people's connections, but also, like, the races, like, Seemingly everyone lost connection to the second race and that's what happened to me when it was like the first couple of rounds so yeah I think what we're going to do from now on is just like well I can still focus on like covering my streams for the time trial because that doesn't affect anyone else but for the races I guess I'll have to unfortunately like miss out and be on the ability to stream those and like I got, I got those couple of streams in for the Friday and Sunday night races so at least you get an idea of what I've been doing these whole times on the time trial but yeah if if you're watching this on YouTube and you've been watching it through to the end then I really appreciate it and even if you've been watching the videos in general so I appreciate sort of clicking on the videos to sort of check them out and at least see what I've been doing or even if it's between skipping through or just watching the first few minutes and thinking this is it for me or I don't know but <laughs> I appreciate the the view anyway, the the sort of the plus one I guess, the the fact that you've checked out the video but obviously I appreciate it more if the videos actually get watched and even though this is a Twitch stream right now I'll be exporting this over to YouTube like I do with all my streams. So as I say, as I'm saying there, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're watching it through to the end here then I appreciate it but otherwise that'll do it for me here today on the stream and it's just gone nine o'clock so yeah that'll do it 
So yeah, I guess stay tuned for what I'll be doing next and I don't know if, I don't think I'll be streaming the race on Sunday but I'm hoping to be doing Stardew Valley stream tomorrow for a while but I'll see what happens there but for me on Project Cars here today that'll do it there so and I guess there's no point in me doing a raid really there's only one viewer in chat and they're probably like lurking or not even actively viewing so if you are there one viewer in chat then hello and goodbye to stream but yeah, as as I'm trying to get through, so, as yeah, as as always, stay tuned for more and thanks for watching.